What's going on, Summoners? I'm Kangas, and I'm here to bring you our promised mid-patch update. Our analysts are constantly keeping track of the current meta and the state of the game, so this video will follow up on the balance changes and also provide updates to our five tier lists. So make sure you hit that sub button, join our Discord through the link in the description down below, and let's hop into the content. Beginning with the top lane, we got lots of balance changes to cover. Wukong's up first as his QAD ratio as well as AD growth were lowered this patch. After popping off last patch as a result of buffs to Divine Sunderer, Riot was quick to nerf the Monkey King. Understandably so too, as he ended up last patch with a 53% win rate, and it's now dropped to a much more manageable high 51% this patch. But his placement in the S tier still feels accurate, so we'll leave him untouched. Nasus was also a victim of this patch, as the Sunder buffs made him too powerful in lower elos. His win rate skyrocketed, and he became arguably the strongest pick for average players with a difficult to punish laning phase and unstoppable late game. Oh, and by the way, if you're still struggling to punish late game picks, make sure to hit up a coach on ProGuides.com. They love to help and will walk you through exactly how to punish scaling champions in the laning phase. Anyway, Nasus got nerfing to his sustain and dropped his win rate by about a full percentage this patch, and things have definitely looked like they're calming down. We'll still leave him in the A tier for the update. Next up was nerfed to Nar. His base AD was reduced by two, and like we expected, it was kind of a minor change. His winner dropped by about a half of a percent, so yeah, the nerf technically had an impact, but it really doesn't make or break him. Unfortunately though, the same cannot be said for Renekton, who was the victim of much harsher nerfs this patch. His Q sustain was a major target this patch, and he got absolutely wrecked. His already low win rate has dropped to a mid 46%. And while I'm sure the pick can still be powerful in the right hands, the impact of this nerf is much more significant than the other top lane nerfs this patch. In spite of this nerf, he holds an incredible presence in elite levels of pro play, so we'll still leave him in the A tier. Alawi's buff is up next, and this was one that I was really curious about. I mean, how much of a difference would a little bit of extra mana actually make for the laning phase? Well, based on initial data, her win rate in high elo has actually dropped, but this is most likely because the patch is still fresh. It'll likely even out as it plays out, but her overall win rate across all elos has actually increased by half of a percent in spite of how seemingly insignificant this buff was. Although her placement remains in the B tier, we'll keep checking on her as she's on the border of pushing to A tier. Malphite was buffed as well, and a lot of players didn't think that he needed one. Both his overall and high elo win rates went up by half of a percent as a result of buffs to her W. They essentially compensated for the Bramble Vest nerfs, and he's pretty much back to the same power level that he held before them. So he'll remain in the S tier. Now, the placement that's most significant is, of course, Mundo's. He was just reworked, and the consensus is that he is absolutely busted OP, for the majority of players at least. Our analysts do want to note that off the rip, he's already tearing solo queue apart in low to mid elo, and while his win rates are below 50% in high elo, remember that this is his first patch. He's supposed to underperform a bit, but the fact that he's actually doing quite well signals that he might actually be overtuned on release. This placement is rather early and it's volatile for sure, and as players learn to play against the new Mundo, they may drop, but at the same time, may also increase because the ones that play him may gain more experience. That said, we've also moved Shen down to the S tier to make room for our new buddy. So our OP picks for this patch are Set and Dr. Mundo, followed up by Lee Sin, Riven, Mordekaiser, Fiora, Nocturne, Jax, Silas, Malphite, Garen, Darius, Gwen, Wukong, Camille, Urgot, and Shen in the S tier. Next up, we got the jungle. First up for nerfs again is, of course, Udyr. His Phoenix Saints received a pretty harsh nerf this patch. The result is that his early clear speed is significantly lower and that he deals less damage at practically all points of the game. His win rate has dropped by about a full percentage and a half, and things are definitely not looking so hot for the formerly fearsome jungle king. So we dropped him down all the way to the B tier this patch. But before we move forward to the rest of the junglers, I want to go over our question of the day. Do you think it's worse when an item or a champion is overpowered? Personally, I dislike it when an item is overpowered because if it's just a champion, at least I can ban it out. But if it's a whole item that affects an entire category of champs, that makes things a little more messy. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Now back to jungle changes, like Malphite, Ramus was also hurt heavily by the Bramble nerfs, so he actually received buffs to his W and ultimate this patch, and has seen significant gains at all ranks. We're actually moving him up to the A tier, most notably because of the reduced cooldown on his ultimate in the early game. Once again, Hecarim was buffed to this patch, with some extra base armor and higher ratios on his Q. Hecarim is definitely starting to kick it into high gear. Back from the dead, his win rate shot up by 2% this patch. Although his B tier placement will stay for now, you can definitely consider him an A tier pick if you already were used to playing him with damage. We want to take some time to continue assessing his strengths before we move him up though. 
Although Jarvan received a huge buff this patch, he still isn't really performing exceptionally well. His W's cooldown was reduced by three whole seconds, but in spite of this, we're gonna have to redo his placement and actually adjust him back into the B tier. So our OP picks for the jungle are still Lee Sin and Kha'Zix, followed up by Elise, Evelyn, Ivern, Fiddlesticks, Diana, Shaco, Zac, Xin Zhao, Kindred, and Kane in the S tier. Next, we have the mid lane. The balance change many mid laners wanted to see was the nerf to Talon this patch. So how much damage has it actually done? Well, we actually knocked Talon out of our OP tier in the high elo and for a good reason. His win rate dropped three whole percent in elite play after this nerf. Now that is bound to make a gradual recovery as players adjust, but there's no doubt that pushing the damage to the second portion has made the game much more playable when facing Talon. His overall win rate has dropped about half of a percent in comparison, and while it's a tough call, we'll go ahead and still leave him in the S tier in spite of the changes this patch. There's room for him to move down to the A tier, and we'll let you know next patch when we have more data. Another change was for Ziggs. He received a pretty hefty buff, and I'll be the first to admit that our analysts did not have high hopes for the champion. But they've been proven wrong, as early data suggests that he might actually be good now. His win rate has increased by 2% this patch. The extra Q damage and the buff to his ultimate's travel speed equally contribute to his newfound success. Although he does still struggle against mobile, high damage picks, Ziggs is able to provide more reliable and consistent damage in fights now. His ultimate is much easier to use and thus more impactful than before. So we've actually moved him up to the B tier this patch. Our OP picks are still Zed and Yasuo, following them in the S tier with Pantheon, Talon, Annie, Fizz, Echo, Kiana, Viego, Diana, Ari, Yone, LeBlanc, Cassidan, Silas, Anivia, Vladimir, Katarina, and Lee Sin. Next up, we'll run through the bot lane. We saw quite a few bottom lane changes to this patch as well. The first was for Kai'Sa. In an attempt to break the seemingly endless cycle of Kai'Sa ending the patch as the most popular marksman, she was finally nerfed. The increased cooldown on her Q at early ranks has done its damage as she's currently the second most popular marksman in the game. No, I'm not actually kidding though, as Ezreal has gone ahead and taken the throne for himself. Nonetheless, Kai'Sa retains plenty of popularity as she's still an insane late game threat with mixed damage and will therefore leave her in the S tier. Varus was quickly nerfed after he started to gain popularity in higher elos. His W's damage was reduced this patch and unfortunately he's seen a dip in the win rates. While he was almost ready to make the push into the A tier, he'll have to stay rather average in the B tier now. Next up is Draven, who got a pretty serious buff to his Q. Damage is always welcome when you're playing a Marksman, and his Q received both a base damage and a scaling buff. Although it's early in the patch, his win rate in Elite Play shot up 2 percentage points, while his overall win rate went up a little more than a whole percent. Once again, he has the necessary presence to bully his opponents and snowball off of leads, so his placement has been adjusted and he's up to the S tier. Aphelios received a page-long set of changes, but essentially they were just some extra base stats and buffs to his Severum and Crescendum. The good news is that his overall win rate went up by a whole percent, but he still continues to underperform overall, so we'll leave him in the C tier. The rest of our bot lane tier list remains untouched. Ezreal dominates the bot lane right now due to the buffs that he received the last patch, as well as the fact the players are actually running Divine Sunderer on him now. He's back to being an old, unkillable poke machine and consistently racks up plenty of damage in longer games. He's a great team fighter and can also contribute heavily to the a play playstyles that we typically see in North American solo queue. We've also added Set to our tier list. Like Tom Kench, he can duo with Senna and is doing really well in the bot lane. We have very few games to go off of, unfortunately, for data numbers, and in spite of his high win rate, we've placed him in the A tier. If he can pull out those numbers with more games played, he absolutely deserves to be in the S tier, and it's simply a waiting game at this point. It's also important to note that he's really unpopular as a bot laner, so our analysts have very little personal experience to go off of. So in our OP tier, we have Ezreal and Samira, followed up by Jinx, Kaisa, Ash, Vayne, Jin, Seraphine, Swain, Sivir, Tristana, and Draven. Finally, we'll conclude with everybody's favorite role, supports. And of course, this patch featured no support balance changes. The good news though, well, it's actually gonna be bad news for lots of you, is that we have some updates to our list. Guess who's S tier now? You probably don't want to guess, but I have to tell you because uh, that's what this video is all about, and I'm not happy about this either. Now, uh, this time to rip the band-aid, Yumi has moved up this patch. Although the shifts have been gradual, it's hard to deny that the buffs to support items last patch definitely had an effect. Enchanters are slowly rising up, and leading that charge is none other than everyone's least favorite cat, Yumi. She also received a minor buff in patch 11.10, and everything has come to fruition right now. She is undeniably good because of her high utility, and also just her relative safety. Janna, Nami, and Sona should also be on players' radars. All three have their own strengths and are great additions to a team when they already have a solid frontline. 
That said, our OP picks are Leona, Thresh, and Lulu, followed up by Bard, Morgana, Nautilus, Blitzcrank, Maokai, Zyra, Senna, and Yumi in the S tier. All that said, we've wrapped up our mid-patch update. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Really hope you enjoyed this patch, and I'm curious what you think about that Mundo rework too. Don't forget to like the video and sub to the channel for all things League of Legends in the future, but most importantly, best of luck on the Rift, everybody. Stay hydrated, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, <laughs>